Kiki. Hello, everyone. Hi. <laughs> it's always so strange. Uh, mm, I can't. Um, so uh, with James I saying know, hello to I know, like, nobody. Yeah, no, I think Rich is already on there and D'Angelo, um, but Rich is obviously in Europe and complaining about how late it is over there. We've got we've got a few ah. people on. Hello, Thank you for everybody. coming on, matey. Oh. I'm so happy that um, I could get you on to do the live stream. So this has uh -oh. been... A, can you Hold hear on. me? Oh, I'm okay. having issues. Uh-oh. Just turn Hold on. Off. Technical issues. Hey, Eve. I can't hear you. I was hearing echoing. It was echoing. I can hear you now. Yeah, I had to take these off. I'm going to try again, but they were echoing in my ear. So let me try again. Uh, okay. Um, Anyone watching, if you can hear okay or see okay, let us know. Yeah, let us know. Let's see. Mark Robes. Oh, wait. Thank you so much. That's very generous. <laughs> Okay. All right. How does that how does that sound to you? I can't. I I can't. You hear can't you. hear me. I, well, now I, I can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's see how we go. <laughs> yeah. If anything, I'll just take them out. It's not a big yeah, deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi everyone. Hi okay Joanna. Now. Um. Hello. So, Maitre, thank you mm -hmm. so much for coming on. Oh, Pepe, thank you for asking me. I was so excited when you asked me. I'm like. <laughs> well, this this is um this has been like a few weeks in the making. We were going to do this a bit earlier, but I had to postpone for a little bit. Stay high. Right. Um, so I'll just explain to everybody what we're going to do today, and you know, like we'll we'll improvise if we need to. But basically, the idea we had for this live stream was that um, uh, I was going to talk about uh, my favorite current my favorite current note in perfumery and and matey would would do the the same um mm -hmm. and i was going to pick a few fragrances that i like with her favorite note and vice versa um as well just to make it a little bit interesting but we don't know what we've chosen so right. we could have we could have some doubling up yeah. so that's I that's all feeling good <laughs> well i'm i'm re actually really interested to to hear what you what you've chosen for me so my my note um my favorite note of the moment is patchouli and it has been for a while it's one of my very favorite notes mm -hmm. um and do you want to say what yours is mate yes i've been very into tuberose or white flower tuberose specifically um i don't know there's just that's kind of what i'm into now it's, it's so pretty before i used to stay away from it because i it was always very sweet and I always got that like um, uh, bubble gum kind of sweetness, but there's different kinds and I've just gotten really into exploring the different ones, the ones that don't smell like bubble gum, that just smell beautiful. And there's some sheep styles in here because, you know, okay. <laughs> I so, love uh, sheep. It's really interesting before we start talking about the actual perfumes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so just for my own benefit today for this for the stream, I've got patchouli oil um, here, which is just oh, I should have brought you know, mine. Like, and yeah. I've got a, and I've got some tuberose absolute um, here as well. Um, Look at and you when all prepared. I, well, it, I'm not totally prepared, like. Um, it's really weird because a lot of people mention this bubble gum thing with tuberose, and I never, I never get that. And it must, and I think that maybe it's just because of the type of bubble gum maybe. that. Yeah, I've, I think I've maybe traditionally that's what it smelled like, and like when they mm. first started coming out with tuberose perfumes. I'm not sure, honestly, but that's what I was getting. And actually, there is one that kind of had that bubble gummy quality, but. 
there's other things to kind of cut through that so it's not too sweet it's it's actually really pretty so yeah um well so how how do we want to do this do you want to go first or do you want me to go um, first uh hi uh, amy uh you can hi, go Amina. first i'm actually trying to find the live chat so i can see everybody what everybody's saying because i can't it's not coming up on oh that's why because i'm a dummy and i didn't click over it <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I see it now. <laughs> hey, right. everybody. Okay. okay, now I see Eve. Okay, but you can yeah. go ahead. You can go first. That would be good. All right. So I, I have chosen four of my favorite tuberose perfumes or, or perfumes that feature tuberose heavily. Um, and I, and I want to preface this by saying this is one of the most difficult notes for me to uh to like a perfume with if that makes any sense because mm -hmm. i find with tuberose most of these perfumes really wear me rather than i wear them and that's that's the only right. thing they're because, quite heavy yeah and and it can be the very one, overpowering it is it is and the one yeah. interesting thing i have found when i when i was smelling this tuberose absolute is I actually would really love a perfume that just smelled like this because I, when mm -hmm. I was thinking about the other perfumes that I, that I picked out, um, I, I'm not crazy about the stuff that that they put in with the tuberose, and maybe it just um, detracts a little bit from the ingredient itself. But let me let me get on with my choices. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> The first one I've chosen is from Histoire de Parfum, um, and it's uh, Tuberus Toi Animal, I think is it's pronounced. So I might yeah. um, just type it in so everyone can understand which one I'm talking about. Um, now, if we have uh, overlapping, do we want to say it like now? Or <laughs> did you pick? Wait? Did you pick this one? I did. I sure yeah. did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I wasn't <laughs> sure if you if you had this one. So, I actually really like this one because of all the other tuberose perfumes I chose. It's the warmest. It's kind of like the the darkest. Um, there is yeah. a hint of sweetness um, mm -hmm. from. I think it's cinnamon. I get I get a bit of cinnamon in there, and there is this mm -hmm. tobacco note and for me, it's um, probably the most wearable of the ones that I've chosen. Like that, I would that I would actually uh, wear. Uh, so, given that that's one of your choices, like what what do you really like about it? Well, I I really like that it's not too sweet and it's not that overpowering. I think that Immortel is really beautiful in here. I think it gives it. There's also something a little bit herbal in the opening which makes it a little fresh, but not bright or it's not juicy. So there's there's another tuber that I have that's like bright and juicy and very rich and dense and really overpowering. And this one has the same kind of tuberose note, but it's just dark, a little darker and more herbal and not as sweet, which I think makes it more wearable. And I could see it just being a little more wearable for you as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Stacy made an interesting comment because, and I've heard this before, is that tuberose can be animalic. I, I personally never have made that that connection. Do you find that as well? Because to me, it's really I, kind of waxy and green. And I think the ones that I have are animalic, and that's what attracts me to them. I don't think I'm okay. not sure if it's. A, I don't think it's the tuberose. And but like that note itself, I think it's the other things that go into it that make it maybe more animalic or maybe it, it can be a little musty, maybe. Um, I'd yeah. have to smell, I want to smell that tuber off absolute now to, to see, but the ones that I've, I've chosen are more on the animalic side and that's why I like them because they are a little musty. So yeah. possibly. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I, and it yeah. seems to me tuberose, um depending if you're wearing it in cold weather and warm weather might actually smell differently that's the impression i get anyway right um all right so you want i'll shall i keep going with my list and then we'll we switch yeah. over to you 
All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the second one, which is probably one of the most w- well-known tuberose perfumes in the world is I, mm-hmm. that I chose was Carnal Flower by Frederick Mal. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, uh, that one that one is also very wearable, but I probably find that um, I like the other white florals that are in that perfume as well. Um, and I remember getting quite a bit of jasmine and, and orange blossom in that perfume, um, and it seems more suited to warmer weather. But um, there apparently there is coconut in it as well, but I'm not sure that mm. I smell coconut like prominently, but it does give, it does have this like creamy texture through through the whole perfume um, that I that I really like. Yeah, it's been a while since I've smelled that one, um, but I remember it being very flowery, and I don't like super flowery perfumes. You know, I, it it was very floral like in your face floral so i that one was a pass for me but it's been a while since i smelled it so i would be interested in revisiting it each okay. does it stunning so it, yeah. it, well uh and i think i've read somewhere and someone else can confirm or 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 not that um it's like a perfume that has like one of the highest concentrations of um tuberose natural tuberose mm-hmm. absolute in it as well and um which supposedly is one reason why it's it's so expensive um yeah. the third one i'm going to i'm going to also put this down is from uh, a house an italian house laboratorio mm-hmm. olfattivo and i think stacy has like you know a, a couple of perfumes from this this house um and this one is Thank called uh, this one's called tuberosis, okay. And I don't, I don't hear um, anyone really talk about this one mm-hmm. too much. And I had a sample um, a while ago, and I really enjoyed this one. And the perfumer is Jean Claude Elena as well. Um, and this one is really, really. I found this really, really nice and long lasting as well. And it's- you know, it's sometimes tuberose. Anymore, What's that? Oh, I've lost you. You got me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, this one, this one, uh, I find. Um, I know. Uh, do you want to? Do you want to try? Your your bit muffled sound oh no uh, i think we're, i think muffled. i'm good now what about now yeah i can hear you and you're, what about I can now see you can you hear me okay yeah yeah it's live yeah all right <laughs> <laughs> so so this tuber tuberosis is um like got a bit of spice and i i get um a bit of carnation with it as well so it's kind of a very uh-huh. unisex tuber tuberose um which I think a lot of got you know, if, if there are a lot of guys who are worried about trying tuberose, um, this one is definitely good, and it's got a real, the real like Jean Claude Elena, you know, style about it. It's kind of quite transparent, um, and you think it's you think it's light, but it actually lasts a long a long time. Um, I mean, it's so, tuberculosis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. I, I, so I remember the first time I posted about this on Instagram, and someone did say that it sounded like a disease. So, uh. <laughs> well, I'd be interested in. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, all right, so this this next one, this last one. So we've, we've done the three so far. You haven't tried. So you haven't tried that one, mate. Uh, no, no, I haven't. Okay. What, what was the house? I'm, it was it's, when it was cutting in and out, and I missed the house. Ah, oh, okay. I'll just type it in. Uh, I'll never forget tuberculosis, though. <laughs> oh, you like my mug? Yes. This is the mom mug. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Mm, okay, yeah. 
All right. So the last one, the last one that I've chosen, the last one that I've chosen, um, I'm I, I like a few weeks ago. I was I was actually thinking about buying a bottle of of this one, um, and I might have mentioned it in one of my videos as well. I sprayed this on. I've still got I've still got a sample. I sprayed this on in the morning mm -hmm. and. A few hours later, I got in the car to drive somewhere, and the, the the smell of this perfume stayed in my car for about two weeks afterwards. And it's um, the Naomi Naomi Good Sir Nuit de Bacalit. Um, I'll just type yeah, it I'm in. I'm gonna look these so. up. That one sounds amazing. <laughs> well, see, this one is a perfect example of one that absolutely wears me this is like one of the strongest right. or longest lasting perfumes i've ever encountered um the thing i like about this one though is that uh there's an angelica note and there's also um there's other green notes that complement the tuberose in here mm -hmm. uh, which and then it dries down into this sort of green levery base, uh, and it's really it's it's a really good, interesting, complex perfume. Mm -hmm. But I'm 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 actually almost frightened to to wear it because um, it is so it is so strong, it's so long lasting, and I I'm right. actually I'm a, I'm a little bit self conscious about wearing it but it's definitely <laughs> one that that um you should you should try if you can um, i'm definitely gonna um try it what does that mean night of something that ba bakelite bakelite is um like a type of i think it's like a type of plastic or vinyl someone can can chime in because i didn't mm -hmm. look it up <laughs> okay, so they're my, they're my four tuberose. Now, now okay. I guess we'll, we're take. going to talk about the four patchouli fragrances that you've um, chosen. Okay, should okay, yeah, because and then we'll talk about my tuberose picks after. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so for patchouli, I I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure that this one's going to be on your list. <laughs> This is uh, Histories de Parfum 1740. This is Marquis de Sade. And it is probably my favorite patchouli um, so far that I've smelled in my collection. Um, it's, it's so dark. And in the beginning, it's kind of scary. It's very herbal and kind of funky and almost must, too musty. But then it just smooths out. And... It's just the most beautiful, like earthy. There's um, immortelle in here too. So there's, I don't know. It's, I, I, I just love that note of immortelle. I, I love what it does. It just, I feel like it, it, it kind of brightens or freshens it up, but not, but still keeps it kind of grassy and earthy. Yeah, I just, I just got. Um, what else did I get because of you? Uh, sob, sobles by any Gutal. Oh, yeah it's so good so good yeah. well <laughs> it's I'm, like I hate, golden. i'm gonna this i'm gonna disappoint you matey because i didn't actually choose 1740 as oh. but, you, but i'll tell you i'll tell you why is because i know there's patchouli in this in this perfume mm -hmm. i just don't think about it as a patchouli perfume i think right. i think about the immortel i think about the lever um and the, to me there's a lot of like birch tar mm -hmm. in in mm -hmm. it um but the, patchouli, but the patchouli is there um yeah but i did i'll, I'll i mean obviously i'll wait till my turn but there is there is another <laughs> histoire de parfum that i chose instead ah okay okay yeah i i did struggle with my patchouli because a lot of my perfumes have patchouli in them because I do love patchouli, but they also have vetiver and sandalwood. So mm -hmm. then they turn into not patchouli, you know, centric perfumes. Yeah. They're yeah. like a combination. So hopefully my next ones don't disappoint you. Well, this one, <laughs> this one is 
patchouli. Have you? This one's called patchouli aromatique by Maison Lancome. Oh, my bottle probably super dirty, but it's a really pretty bottle. It's picking up all the light. Um, and it is like a peppery patchouli. Um, I think there's vetiver in here too, and there's sage. And it's basically just like straight up patchouli to me. Like it's it it smells very similar to my patchouli uh, essential oil. Yeah, it does. Um, I, ha I had not heard, I had not heard of that one. Yeah, it's really good. Um, the are they still are know. they still making it or I is it discontinued? So. No, I think this one's still around. Some of them that have been discontinued, but this patchouli one I've seen around. So, um, yeah, I, over here, um, sometimes uh, Fragrance Scent has them. Macy's has them. I don't know where else. I forgot where I got mine. Probably Fragrance Net when they were selling them. But I don't know if they're there anymore. Lovely. So what was that? That was number two? Yeah, I think so. Okay, the next one. Again, this is not, this has three different patchoulis in it. <laughs> this is Chris Rusak's After Every Ounce of Joy Leaves My Body. And it's more, it's not an easy to wear perfume. It smells I've tried, like, I've tried it. Yeah, it's not easy, but I absolutely adore it. Like, I, I love it at night when it's just for me. Um, I probably wouldn't wear it during the day out. Um, I don't think people would, you know, give me any compliments. <laughs> I, I I did try a sample of that of that one, Maite, um, and mm -hmm. I appreciate what it is, but I had yeah. really negative scent associations with it. Oh and my gosh, it's so crazy, right? How we have I, I wear had it. I totally felt the opposite. I it just like hit me right here, you know. I I really connected to it probably because I'm messed up inside but <laughs> <laughs> it's so sad like it's a it's kind it's it's gloomy it's a gloomy perfume it is it smells yeah. like wet soil wet pavement um a little vegetal <laughs> nobody absolutely no one <laughs> yeah. um yeah it's it's Strange, but in the best way possible. Um, I, so it's it's I, interesting, I really but it, it's really interesting what you get out of it because to me, I, it smelled the re. Uh, I won't go into the reasons why it's a negative association, but I got like a lot of um, wet cement and concrete vibe mm -hmm. out of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so it, it was it was really industrial smelling to me. Yes. That, well. I, I worked at a vet's office for many, many years, and we used to sterilize our instruments. Um, and the auto the autoclave, which is where we sterilize, when you open it, the steam that comes out, that sterilized like kind of steam, that's what it smells like to me. And I used to sit there and open it and just smell it because I loved it. So that's, I don't know, that's the kind of scent association I get with it. So, you know, it's, it's my own personal thing. Yeah, so that's yeah. the beauty of perfume. You know. That's right. And you love it and that's all that matters. Right. My husband hates it. He absolutely loves it. <laughs> like, oh, what are you wearing? Uh, oh, hi, Sherry. I know. This time difference is crazy. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Sherry. Arrogance here. So many beautiful people. Thank you, guys. Um, number four, this yeah. is my, so this is, again, not, it is patchouli. It's amber and patchouli. This is uh, Ellie Saab's Essence number three, Amber. And the reason I like this amber is because it has patchouli in it. Um, so it's not too sweet. It's an earthy amber. It's really, really beautiful. It's probably my benchmark amber. So I want when I want an amber, I want it to smell earthy like this. Um, I don't want it overly sweet. And I just think the patchouli gives it such a beautiful, like earthy kind of quality. And it's almost airy. And it's just really, really, really nice. So I don't know if you saw this one, but it's beautiful. No. I think it's discontinued. 
Well, the, these Ellie subs, like every time um, I've had so many people uh, mention them to me when like, cause they, they make, um, they have a vetiver one that always I gets do. Mentioned. I have the vetiver one. Yeah. 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 It's um, really beautiful. They, they seem to be really like really highly thought of and I haven't had a chance yeah. to, to try any well, of them. The perfumeries, um, Maison, Maison, wait, what's his name? Francis. Kirk, oh, Kirk Francis Kirkjian. Yeah. Yeah, oh, him, so he did uh, he did all of them. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did the essence line. So yeah. you know, there's something to uh, be said for that. <laughs> yeah, well true, because I happen to think he does his best work for other houses anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um all right, cool. That uh, so apart from 1740, I haven't tried any of the other any of the other ones. Okay. So now I have a list. Oh, no, you uh, did. Oh, you so, cried after every ounce of joy. Oh, yeah, I, my I have. Sorry. I, I and joy left your body. From my memory. <laughs> <laughs> the, joy, the joy did leave my body. <laughs> <laughs> that was the whole point of the perfume. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so I'll talk, I'll, I'll talk about my favourite patchouli. I'll start off with my favourite one. And mm -hmm. believe it or not, of the four that I've chosen to to talk about, um, uh, I've only got one bottle of of these ones, and the first one I'm going to talk about is Patchouli Nobile from Nobile 1942. So love that house. Um, I'm gonna spray it on. I have three I from know. them, and I don't have that one. Yeah, well, it's. <laughs> It's basically like like a true patchouli, like you said, you know, one that smells very close to just regular patchouli oil. But what makes this um, really good to me is that the bl they've blended um, this kind of this labdanum uh, accord in there, and it it doesn't get sweet, but it gets it starts to get smoky, and then eventually it gets like this these really smooth woods come in in the base um but it's just really well blended patchouli perfume I mean, like it is distinctly a patchouli perfume um but it just wears really well on my skin um i think it lasts a long time and it, like it's it's got none of um, you know, there are a lot of patchouli that incorporate um, like a chocolate or some something yeah. sweet. This doesn't have any of that. And if there is any sweet of, hint of sweetness, it's probably coming from labdanum, but it's never, it never gets overpowering. It's just a beautifully um, earthy, woody patchouli. Um, I, I love it. I love it. Um, yeah. Have you tried this one? No. I have not. No, I have Ambra No Seal. I have the Dragonfly one, the Blue Blue, and oh, okay. I forgot what the other one. No, but I have not tried that one. So okay, I'll have cool. to. I'll have to because I really love that house. Yeah, yeah. It's and the the bottles are beautiful. These these they caps are. are just, yes, uh, I love on. those caps. One of my bottles didn't come with that cap because apparently they changed it. And I was yeah. Like, what yeah. happened? That was the whole point. I got it. No, but that one didn't come with it. So, but the caps are beautiful. Oh wow, Junior Junior Barreros, thank you so much for that. Um, oh, very cool. This, wow. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, Amina, you should definitely see if you can try some from this house because yeah. there's probably there's very probably beautiful. a few more. The Fuge, Fuge Nobile um, is one I want to try mm -hmm. as well. Um, okay, so I'm going to jump to the Histoire mm -hmm. de Parfum one. I, okay. I actually chose Noir Patchouli. Uh, okay. And so I chose that because that to me, I, obviously it's it's got patchouli in the name, but... Right, I was going to think of that as patchouli. <laughs> but it is really interesting because when I smelled that, um i i got the connection to 1740 it was like that's like 1740 but without without the immortel um probably right. without some of the smokiness um and dried fruit that that is in 1740 um but this but noir patchouli has got the same type of 
leather and spice. Um, it's like this, to me, it's a really dark, um, almost gothic patchouli. Um, and But there, it does this strange thing in the middle of its development, like these these mm -hmm. kind of floral notes um, mm -hmm. come out of it as well. And it's it really grew on me because at first time, first time I really, uh, I tried it, um, I thought it was just too sort of one, too much of a one trick pony, but, right. um, but as right. I tested it, it developed really well. So if you like the 1740, the only reason I don't have a bottle is because I kind of get what I need out of the 1740 right. and it would feel like it would be a little bit redundant. redundant. So yeah. Hi Joseph. Yeah, I will have to try it. Um, but that, I think the reason why I love 1740 is because it has that funky kind of fruitiness. So I don't know. Maybe I'll sample yeah. it first. And then, yeah. It, yeah. It, Noir Patchouli definitely um, doesn't, doesn't have that one. Um, yeah. yeah. Hi Ryan. Um, so it's, uh, no, patchouli is definitely that musty attic vibe. I agree. I agree. Um, okay. So the, the next one I'm going to talk about, this one I'm actually, is probably going to be the next bottle I I buy. Um, I'm just waiting to finish my decamp. But this one here was love at first smell for me. It's from Javoy. It's Sikidelik. Oh, yeah. Um, and I know Stacy likes this one and there's a few other people that like it. Um, this, ju this just like got me straight away. And this one um, is, a, to me, a sweet patchouli. Um, the way that that um, the vanilla and amber and, and it gets musky in, in the dry down as well. Mm -hmm. I just love every every minute of it on my skin. Have you tried this one? I have. I have. It is beautiful. And it was similar, not exactly to the patchouli aromatic, but that's why I didn't get a bottle of it because I thought it would, it's too similar, you know. Um, ah, okay. if it, yeah, but it is beautiful. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. It's good Thank to know you. that that, 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 <laughs> lan, that Lancome is, um, is, very similar um yeah. my final choice is from serge Luton and it's borneo 1834 have you tried that one i have not and I so this one time. this one um i was nearly going to buy up until i'd smelled the jovoy um because borneo has got this to me i smell like this bitter dark cocoa mm -hmm. note in there but there's also this lush dark green accord in there and it's this strange combination of 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 um the earthy patchouli the cocoa mm -hmm. and being in a rainforest all all at once um mm -hmm. that i really liked about it but it's damn expensive at the moment because they've put them right this used to be in the belgia um luton Luton's bottle. Um, now they've yeah. put it in the tall um, mm -hmm. gratis, Gratisiel bottle, and they're to me uh, in Australian dollars, they're about they're about nearly between four and five hundred dollars a bottle, yeah. which is a big That's investment. Quite a bit. It is. It is. It's a lot. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, Joanna likes <laughs> Oh, thank you, Amina. Yeah, good good point, Denby. I actually I'm not a big fan of sweet sweet fragrances, but for some reason, I give this one a pass because it just works on my yeah. on my skin. I think that's what this one does not do. It doesn't go. This one's more peppery and not as sweet. It's sweet, but it's, it's more to me. I get more of this like that sage. I don't know. Comes off a little bit peppery. Um. So Eve's asking. Um, uh, so, if you're asking about the Serge with Coroman, Coromandel, to me, they're not very similar at all. I find Coromandel a lot ref a lot more refined and smoother and kind of user-friendly compared to um, Borneo. Mm -hmm. you, do you, have you tried Coromandel, Maite? Oh, uh, I have. 
um, and it was good, but it just didn't like blow me away, you know. So it I didn't. I, uh, yeah, it was a pass. I'm the same. Me. Yeah. Yeah, and I've only tried the EDP formulation, so I haven't tried the EDT that everyone. Remember. Yeah. Right. Uh, I think it was the EDP. I think. I think yeah. I may still have the sample. Um, and then I was a little I bit underwhelmed by. It. Oh, for Borneo. Yeah. I see somebody yeah. mentioned private label. I actually have private label on my hand because I was trying to decide. <laughs> but it's more about the sandalwood and the vetiver than it is about the yeah. patchouli. So I, I left it out. But I love private label. I, I love it. I'm yeah. probably going to put it on for bed. <laughs> I agree. If we were talking if we were talking about vetiver perfumes, I would have probably mm -hmm. chosen private label. Uh, Which is another one of my favorite notes. Uh, but it's, it's always going to be one of my favorite notes. <laughs> Vet of a fiend. Um, and, and Joseph, yeah, Reminiscence Patchouli is a really good one and a good, um, and it's really well priced as well. I agree. Um, so let's talk about your, your oh, tuberose. Oh, my tuberose. Let's see. Mm. Clutches, pearls. I love I'm always making <laughs> Amina clutch her pearls. <laughs> so you mentioned the tuberose. Uh, yeah. Anima, which I really, really, it's so beautiful. Um, so a similar one to this, but it's the same type of tuberose. Is um, Tiger Tiger. I don't know if you can see that, but Tiger uh, Tiger by Francesca Bianchi. But this one yeah. is more um, juicier and sweeter and brighter. Like I would wear this one in the daytime, and I would probably wear this one at night, kind of thing. You know, um, yeah. it doesn't have that herbal kind of quality that um um this one has i think because i forgot what it has in it but i got something a little herbal um but yeah the francesca bianchi is just gorgeous and it's a sheep so um i forget what's in it that makes it smell a little bit like vanilla in the dry down um i think helotropin or something something i think like that yeah. along those lines so yeah. when it dries down i get this like vanilla kind of quality and it smells so so good and it lasts forever and it's just gorgeous but it is overpowering it's one of those very overpowering tuberose fragrances it's very sweet very you know syrupy sweet um but i love francesca's how many, work so how many <laughs> this sprays? is a blind eye how many, <laughs> how sprays? many sprays oh, oh. exactly eight and a half <laughs> <laughs> no less <Yep. laughs> Are you sure you're not curly fragrances? <laughs> Listen, if I showed you my abs right now, you would know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next one is um, Sarah Baker Charade. I love this. Now, for the longest time, I thought there was civet in here because this is so, so musky. Um, but there's, it's actually the honey that makes it animalic, which she corrected us. We, uh, Amina and I actually did a live of um, her her lineup. And yeah, it's honey and tuberose. And it's gorgeous. Is somebody laughing in the comments? <laughs> Eight and a half spray. <laughs> <laughs> yes, charade is gorgeous. It's so animalic. Um, but it, it's very dark and smoky. I think it's a sheep. It may not be. I don't know. I feel like it is. It reminds me of one, um, just because of that very like um, smoky kind of dark. It's very um, vintage feeling. I think the inspo was um, Audrey Hepburn and uh -huh. well, yeah, and some guy that I can't remember his name. <laughs> but it's very like it makes me think of those black and white movies with the you know cigarettes and. Maybe maybe somebody in like flapper attire is wearing this, but it's beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Again, very heavy, but not because it is so dark. I don't think it pulls overly sweet on me. It pulls more musky and kind of smoky, so, but it is so sweet. It is sweet because of the honey. Wow. Ah, okay. I haven't tried any yeah. Sarah Baker stuff. Uh, it's really hard to. Um, get over here to sample. I don't even uh, think they've got distribution here. So uh, oh, really? one day, one day. <laughs> well, I think they just continued that crazy one, Jungle Jezebel. I'm kind of glad that was terrible. That was 
I I appreciate the artistry, but it was uh, not something I would ever ever wear. It was just horrific. <laughs> Be careful, because there's some very sensitive perfumers um, oh. who who read comments and stuff. Oh my gosh! Well, it's my opinion. It's you know, just my opinion. <laughs> now this one. Is my favorite uh, and, at the moment. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um. Oh man, yeah, that was cute. That was a that was a tough one for me. I remember smelling that, and I was just um. Let me stop. Let me stop about jungle <laughs> <as well. laughs> Like how? Oh yes. Fight. Now this is the eau de parfum which he just came out with. So um, I prefer this one over the the uh, eau de toilette concentration. Oh, Jesus. It smells like an ashtray. It's, <laughs> I don't know. I don't, it is so gorgeous. It's got this ashtray note, right? That makes it very smoky, but there's also that sweet tuberose and artichoke. And Ooh. yes, it's so different, so beautiful. It's just, everything it really is i i i've been obviously i just got this and i've made quite a dent in it so hello michelle happy hey, belated michelle. birthday happy birthday for yesterday yeah um so yeah i i think have you tried you've tried some of uh, i've tried um i've got the edt i've got a sample of the edt which i actually mm -hmm. really like um mm -hmm. it sounds like this one is pretty different to the EDT. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's a lot no, darker have, and smokier. Yeah. See, and it's mm -hmm. interesting because I actually find the EDT pretty dark as well. Um, I'm, I'll probably do a review of it at some point, but um, it, it's, yeah, I, I I like what Carter's doing. You know, like I, I love Buen Camino yeah. and, and even mm -hmm. Playa Linda, although Playa Linda just doesn't last on my skin at all. But really? um, spite, oh. yeah, yeah. But spite, um, this one sounds really, really good. Yeah, it is. So the um, the spite EDT didn't last very long on me. This one, I get you know, average time. You know, mm -hmm. as, as long as you do eleven and a half sprays, then you should be good. <laughs> but <laughs> <Sissy spray. laughs> But yeah, the tuberose in here is so it's it's not like that bubblegum tuberose, like very sweet. It's it's more natural, like it smells like the flower, I think, more so than I don't know, whatever is in the other ones. I don't know anything about, you know, perfume making, but it does smell more of the natural variety of tuberose. Mm -hmm. Um it's, it's totally different than the other ones I picked. It's completely different, um, but just just gorgeous. I am I, I am very um, interested in the fact that you you basically called it. It smell smells like an ashtray because yeah, I actually <laughs> well, I actually really a, like that smell. I actually really like that too. smell, and I haven't I found too. anything that's really come very close to that. Yeah, it does smell like you've been at the club, you know, partying and it, you know, the smoke gets in your hair. That's what it <laughs> smells like. And it actually, I don't know, it smells really good to me. Um, and there is an inspo, an ashtray inspiration. <laughs> he, he sent me the picture of the ashtray. So it does exist, <laughs> the inspiration yeah. for it. And I don't know exactly what makes it smell like that. We did a, um, he had a, the, what is it called? The flight salon where he broke down the notes and all of that. Um, and I forgot to ask him what it was that smelled like, you know, that made it smell like that. Um, so I'll have to, I'll have to find out, but I think I did ask him and he, he really was like, I don't know. I don't know what made it smell like that, but there's three <laughs> girls and I forget what else, the artichoke, the rose, there's rose in here. It's beautiful. There, uh, there's a bunch of notes, a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ashtray in the I'll best get... way it is yeah <laughs> yeah yeah there's there is some there are some good ashtray smells um yeah so is that, i would think is that if you're fall? like an ex smoker you probably wouldn't want to smell like that that might turn you off well but, yeah 
Yeah, but um, I I used to smoke, and for so I find that I find the smell of um, so the smell of an ashtray that's just been emptied has has a very distinct has a very distinctive smell as opposed to the smell of a smoker. Like now, when someone has just had a cigarette gets close to me, I can smell that from a from far away and, it, yeah. and it's not very nice but the but the smell of an right. ashtray yeah um yeah I, I i like that those smoky smells even if it's kind of yeah it might be the frankincense there is frankincense in there so yes you are absolutely right about that yeah you would have to do something to the frankincense i think to make it to give it that kind of gray cold um characteristic right oh, and bell, bell yeah there's bell pepper man there's there are so many i think there was like 83 ingredients yeah. or something like that there was a, it was a crazy amount but they just came together in like the most beautiful way um ah. and yeah much more complex than the edp total you the essence of it is still in here but it's it's just more it's just a lot more going on and i don't get the ashtray kind of thing from the EDP either. It looks like, yeah, uh, I'm I'm with you, Joseph, as well. Um, so that was your four, your four tuberose. That was, things, wasn't that it? was oh, four. Cool. Yeah, that went by quick. <laughs> Um, so does anyone uh, I'm just reading through the comments have any specific questions I've got a I've got a question for you though mate um, Absolutely. do you have has your collection grown this year or have you managed to mm-hmm. reduce it mm. so it has grown but I've also sold a lot of persons that I that they were basically just collecting dust yeah and uh not that i have anything against like designer perfumes but i've been more into like vintage and indie so a lot of my designer fragrances like the newer designer ones have kind of kicked the bucket (laughs) but how many how many bottles do you have i don't know (laughs) i don't count if I don't, if I don't count, they don't exist. It's not that many. It doesn't okay. look like that many. <laughs> uh, so, so how do you choose what you're going to wear each day? Uh, I just stand in front of the thing, and it's been basically just vintage lately. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm just eaty, meaty, miny, mow it. I mean, sometimes how I feel, like how I feel, and most of the time I feel like wearing something vintage. So. Mm. You know, I feel bad for my other perfume. <laughs> yeah, I think Stacy does the same thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't look. Just press, press, uh, <laughs> just buy it. <laughs> um, all right, you can answer this too if you want. Um, oh. what do you think is a reasonable fragrance budget per year as a percent? Uh, I, Stephen, I haven't That's- ever thought about it in that way I, of income yeah That's the way I, uh... <laughs> the way i think about it is if i have money for a perfume that i want and i'm and i'm and i shouldn't be using that money for something more important then i'll just buy it so i i don't i don't budget for perfume i just um if there's something i want and i can afford it i'll buy it which is how i approach it so for me, what I've been doing now that my collection has gotten so large, I will sell off perfume to buy yeah. more perfume. I I can't justify spending any more money on perfume. I'm like, I really, it's not a need. It's really not. It's just yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> well, the, the one thing I've done this year, um, guys, is that, and it's been working really well. I before I buy any new bottle, I have to get rid of two existing bottle because my my goal my goal was to actually reduce my collection and only buy stuff I really really loved. So that forced me right. to to choose: do I really want this new bottle over these two bottles I already have? So and it's been um it's been really good. 
it's it worked yeah. really well for me anyway. Yeah. If, if you can't make a dent in a bottle, then you have probably way too many perfumes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You really want to enjoy the ones you have and it's really hard and it gets overwhelming. Like I was at a point where I was super overwhelmed. I didn't, I just kept rotating the same, you know, few because I just, I got so overwhelmed. So yeah. now that I've, kind of curated my collection to things I really, really, really love, like really yeah. love. Uh, it doesn't matter what I choose. I know I'm going to love wearing it, you know, yeah. Even, you know, and I live in hot weather, so I couldn't really do it by like cold weather scents or hot weather scents. So it's yeah. whatever, I, you know, yeah. they can be worn kind of all year round and all of that. So. Yeah. I wear, I wear my stuff. Yeah. All year. One fragrance I actually got rid of because, I literally only wore it once a year. It was by the fireplace by um, Replica. And I love the smell, but realistically, I can't wear it here. It's just too hot for it. So I, I, I got rid of it. <laughs> yeah, I, um, and, I, I, had a sample, I had a sample of that one. And yeah, I just didn't like it. And these days, what I'm doing a lot more is like finishing whole samples or decants of stuff um, mm -hmm. and only then deciding um, whether to I need a bottle of that. Um, right. Before I used to I used to smell something once or twice and then impulsively buy a bottle and have regrets right. later on. Right. <laughs> we got to have no regrets here. Well, hey, Carter. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Yes, we were. <laughs> Look at here. There she is and all her. We want to see the ashtray. You'll have to post the ashtray. <laughs> He's awesome. He's probably one of my favorite people to talk to. He is. Uh, and one of the uh, smartest people I've ever oh, yeah. encountered. Yeah. Uh, Three or four bottles a year. So, D'Angelo, how many are you adding if you're getting rid of three or four? That's not enough, yeah. Mm. Um, so do you have anything – so do you have anything that you want to buy? Like have you got something on, on your wish list at the mm. moment? Uh, so I haven't been sampling too much, so no, um, nothing really, you know, that sticks out there. My last buy was a vintage uh, carnation one because of Carter's flight salon. <laughs> I wanted something that had a prominent carnation note, and that was my last buy. But right now, no, I have nothing on my radar at the moment, and I'm trying not to sample. So that because that's when I start wanting things is when I sample, you know. But I'm gonna have to start again because Amina and I have to review some some indie houses. <laughs> Yeah, I, I keep I mainly keep samples now. Um so I've got something to review. Uh but but I like a couple of weeks ago I was looking through all the samples I had and I was holding on to stuff that I knew I was never gonna right. wear and stuff that I didn't even want to review uh either. Yeah. So I just I just got rid of a, a whole bunch of stuff and I'll just give it away to anyone who wants a bunch of samples that. i need to um, do that cause because I'm i've got there's a couple samples. there's a couple of people who are probably watching here who have sent me stuff um that mm -hmm. are, sit, are sitting there on my desk and i haven't had it and i haven't given myself any time to to try yeah. them properly as well uh, i do have um i do have some saint Clair samples that i haven't tested properly I've, have you tried any from diane saint Clair? No, I have been wanting okay. to. I'm scared to because there is one on my radar. I forget what it's called, but I, I almost blind bought it a couple times. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because yeah. Because um, I I ordered a um a sample pack and I've got um Casablanca, Pandora. That's the one, I think. Casablanca. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's um, the one that, that I've almost blind bought a couple times. Yeah. Yeah, that got recommended to me um, by Sunday Smells on Instagram, and um, so I bought that with with a bunch of other other ones, uh, and they all nice. they all smell amazing from what I've smelled so far. But yeah, um, that's apparently a really good one. Um, Sonia Travel Sensibilities also 
also recommended that one. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mom would yeah. too if I let her. She's like, do you want to give anything away? I'm like, not at the moment. Uh, so Somebody asked about a tea scent. Oh, okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh no no no! I was just gonna I was just gonna put that comment up by just that light because it's because it's an interesting way to look at. It. Um, did someone mention a tea scent? Yeah, somebody asked t about tea scents. Now I'm not a big tea scent person. I don't even think I have any. Do I? Mm, I don't think so. Not that I can recall off the top of my head. So that, that I, I'm tea. I'm the same with tea. Um, mm -hmm. I, I might have a few perfumes that ha that supposedly have a tea note in there, but I'm not a big tea drinker anyway, so I don't have an appreciation for the different teas. Mm -hmm. I I have been okay. testing, and, and I know Stacy likes this one. Um, I've been testing Wulong Wulong Cha from Nisha, Nishane. Um, okay, and I really I really like that, but to me. Um, to me, it's a really good bergamot perfume, um, and there's probably tea in there, but it doesn't it doesn't um, like remind me of any tea. It's just a nice bergamot fragrance uh, with a few other notes. But uh, like, I, I don't have anything that I can say to you is like a specific tea. Now, I've tried rush. Um, is it what's the tea for two by Latis and Perfumer? That's like a real Russian caravan kind of tea mm -hmm. as well. But uh, none of them, none of them really, um, you know, have got. Yeah, jumped out. There was one. Um, it, it was called, I think, Japur Chai. Ah. I can't remember the house, but it was really nice. It was more a gourmand tea. So that might be one to look into. And I, I actually really enjoyed that one. I probably wouldn't wear it too much, but what was the storm? What is, oh. what's the stormy? <laughs> stormy is, I mean, his cat. <laughs> and he kept putting <laughs> his butt in her face. <laughs> my bet. I'll have to smell my bet because I hear that's good for dates. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I think I, I watched. Uh, I was watching Michelle's review on on that one as well, and it looks interesting. interesting. I can't do one spray of anything, I, even private label. I'm like, <laughs> I didn't like Russian tea much, um, Michelle, because I, I mainly got le you know, mainly leather, so I couldn't smell. I couldn't recognize the tea aspect of that one, and it was just a mm. bit. You know, it didn't excite me very, very much. Uh, Lola, hi Lola. Uh, African rooibos. Hi, Who makes that one? I don't know, but I like rooibos tea. So. Hmm. Oh, that's um Collins. Um, Collins. I can't remember his name. Something Collins. World of Collins or something. Oh, like that. Chris. Co Chris Collins. Chris Collins, that's him, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, my brain shuts down at about <laughs> this time. <so. laughs> is it getting late? We'll we'll wrap up soon. Um, no, it's okay. It's okay. This is okay. fun. Yeah. I mean, uh, it smells like her cat. <laughs> <laughs> She's got those pheromones going on. Be careful. Uh, Michelle, who makes Memory Motel? Or is that a Chris Collins scent as well? Ooh, yeah, oh, great. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. I'll make sure to wear it to bed. <laughs> I'll, I'll put, I'll douse myself in the whole sample. Uh, okay. Unuit Nomad. There was, um, there was a perfume I tried a while ago. Um, it was mainly sandalwood. It's called Indian Study. That had like a nice chai chai tea. Um, hey, I got that. It well. It's nice. Yeah, yeah it's lovely. Too. I yeah, remember it's you beautiful. saying it was affordable. It is beautiful. It, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Miller. I got Miller, that because of you. But tall. Yeah, I I am still tossing up, getting getting one of those. Uh, boxer dropper. Which is the boxer dropper? 
<laughs> my best. <laughs> ah, okay. Mm. We've got to have those in the collection. <laughs> mm. Lady killer perfumes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, all right, everybody. Um, anyone got any other questions for us? Because we've been going for an hour now, and that went really, really quickly. That did. That did. We can keep going because, you know. I'm happy to keep going. On I... this, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure you're hungry. It's oh, lunchtime no. over there. That's crazy. That's mm -hmm. crazy. I'm like, I, it, it just makes, okay, it puts things into perspective, right? Like, there's a whole nother world, you know, like, out there. It's, everybody well, lives in these little bubbles, right? Yeah, and, it's, and, it's, so it's Thursday, it's Thursday, 12 noon right now. Um, and outside is about 15 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that translates to in Fahrenheit. Um, but it's I winter, like it. it's, you know, it's officially it's winter. winter now. Yeah. Right, and total opposite. It's summer here in Florida. Yeah. It's, yeah. what time is it? 10 o'clock on Wednesday. But am I, is, I so what city are you in Florida, um, my team? In Sunrise. So I, I live in Broward. Yeah, so, but is, is Florida pretty much warm all year round? Yeah, we get like yeah. two two days. <laughs> of cold no yeah. maybe like two weeks total you know yeah. and it's like at in january kind of you know so we'll go we'll have a few cold days at the end of the year but it's nothing crazy yeah yeah i, I wish I it mean, was colder i mean our winter our winter here is is like it's perfectly livable it never snows it never gets mm -hmm. you know during the day it never gets colder than you know 12 11 degrees on the coldest days um but where sheree oh, lives yeah. in in queensland which is closer to the the equator um mm -hmm. where she lives it's it's kind of like it sounds like it's kind of like florida and it's and it's oh, wow. really nice weather all year round so yeah um depending if you live on south or north in australia or on the coast mm -hmm. or or inland um the weather can be crazy different wow that is so cool ah. to travel. Right, so, well uh, i can't travel at the moment <laughs> well i don't think any of us really can i'm no. not sure <laughs> um so K kdc in quality price what has been your best purchase oh that's a hard question that is a hard question i would have to mm -hmm. say off the top of my head all of my all of my galans have been i've been really well for instance my my favorite perfume at the moment is um habit rouge um by Guerlain, and i can buy a bottle of that for like 50 60 dollars so to me that is amazing mm -hmm. value um i guess a lot... I would say... sorry go ahead. Go. no 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 go ahead. you get a lot uh, i was just going to say i guess a lot of the galans are like that because they're still really good quality and you can get them pretty cheap. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that way about Hermes. I, like I love mm. Bellamy Vetiver. I think that's gorgeous. But also the indie perfumes like Chronotope, um, you know, that they, it's just, you can't beat the quality and they're really well priced. I mean, you kind of skip that overhead, you know, upcharge, yeah. you know, not no fancy packaging, no huge, corporation behind it you know and, the, one and the marketing show. marketing budget mm -hmm, the marketing all of that yeah. so and if you're supporting you know a person <laughs> you're supporting a person um steven uh well i i use I use uh, the Australian, there's an Australian equivalent um of Fragrance X like I, I think I actually bought my Habit Rouge on fragrance x and with a discount code and whatever it worked out to be to be close to that so i don't know if prices have changed or not but i i buy off discounters when when i buy stuff like you know popular mm -hmm. Guerlain and designer fragrances i'm i'm pretty cheap when it comes to that 
Yeah, I refuse to spend like a whole lot of money on one single fragrance. I think probably my most expensive was African leather, and that's probably as far as I'll I'll go. You know, and I don't. I think the most expensive bottle I and I only bought that recently was Frederick Mal French Lover. I don't think I've Mm -hmm. spent more on a on a bottle than that one. Uh, well, and it was only a 50 mil bottle, so probably per mil that would be the most expensive one I've, mm-hmm. I've bought. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'll just, uh, Katie. Uh, yeah, I tried that one a long time ago and it just kind of lasted <laughs> half an hour on my skin and I couldn't smell it anymore. So it, I love you, Carter. <laughs> she is a queen. <laughs> oh gosh! I, now I need to start making videos again. Lord, yeah, you have, to. you have I to. I know. I'm just <laughs> life, man. Life is life is crazy. It's just with two little people, full time job. It's it's a lot, and I don't want to make excuses. Everybody has their stuff going on. No. I just have to, I just have to get, I'm not the most organized person. I'm, you know, kind of a hot mess. So. <laughs> uh, I can, I'll send you a weekly reminder. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have, yeah, I still have a few bottles of Caron in my collection. Um, and definitely the third man is one. If you can find one, do it. Uh yeah, see, Lola misses you too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Nobody cares. I'm like, who cares? There's so many reviewers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's us. That's totally us. It took us two weeks to announce the winner for our, our, our Corona Tilt giveaway. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, I think Stacy's on the wine already. Oh. Oh, yeah, Stacey bought a whole bottle of wine for this. Stacey, I was going to join you, but then I probably wouldn't have been able to sleep, and I already have issues with that. So I decided to just have some nice chocolate tea (laughs) in my huge cup. Yeah, see, everyone cares. Everyone cares. Eve cares. Michelle cares. Stacey cares. I love you Um, guys. (laughs) Such beautiful people. I haven't tried anything from V Canto. I don't think I've, I'm, I might have heard of them, but I don't know anything about them. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to convince uh, Stacy and maybe a couple of other people to do a live on Instagram soon. So yeah. ha, we, you can have four people on Instagram, can't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'll be fine. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> no, Stacy definitely had the whole bottle by herself. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to talk after a whole bottle. <laughs> Two sips and I'd be done. Look. Um, Stephen, oh. thanks for asking. Um, she is well, I mean, she it's going along really good. She's She's in her senior years of high school at the moment, so she's studying music um, and, you know, I get to hear her singing to herself all day um, and it's really nice, so it's good. But she's a bit shy about coming on camera and singing anything, um, a lot shyer than she used to be anyway. Oh, how old is Oh, you told me she was 13? She, she's 16. She's 16. 16. She's a 16 mm. year old. Yeah. That was very uh, shy. I was painfully shy too. Yeah, yeah. She'll grow out of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just keep, uh, keep practicing. Favorite green fragrance. Uh, uh, at the moment, Eau de Jane by Jane Daly or Daly. Yeah, do you say, da- do you, is it Daly or Daly? I just, I think it's, it, it might be Daly. It might yeah, be Daly. I mispronounce everything. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I actually like Eau de Jane as well. I've got a sample, a sample yeah, of it as well. Um, uh, what's the other one? There's one that I really like, but I'm trying to find uh, a bottle of the EDP because I can only find EDT, and that's uh, Jean-Louis Chéret, um, which is a beautiful 
green scent and no one ever really talks about it, but um, it's good. No. Yeah, Bent Verit is another good one. Yeah. Yeah, that by Balmain. Um, what's another green? I don't have too many greens. I definitely agree with that, Joseph, Lan Lanarchist. Um, so they're on Instagram. We're do a few of us are doing this 30 day challenge that Eve, yeah, did I'm Eve make it. that one? Yeah. She did. Um, it's so brilliant. Yeah. I thought that yeah, was it's so awesome. fun. Yeah, I'm on I need two. to ask you how to do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so one of the days coming up is most underrated fragrance in my collection. And this mm -hmm. is the one I'm going to choose for that day. Um, spoiler alert. Um, oh. Lana Chist <laughs> from from um, Caron. Eve is the best. Yeah, she is. Uh, yeah, it's so much fun. That was awesome. You, it, it, you know what? Because we have so many bottles and it's it's just a really good way to kind of make us wear more, you know, and yeah. really think about what we're wearing instead of, because I was, I was gravitating towards the same thing, you know? So now I'm like, okay, let me think about what I'm going to wear and I can dust off some of these perfumes I've just been sitting here. <laughs> Ah, uh, Joseph. So I have not actually tried any of those those ones, and I've heard about all of them because I'm I'm really into green fragrances at the moment, and I want to explore that a little bit more. Yeah. Well, Stacey, I don't mind. I don't mind um, tags mm -hmm. from any of you guys. Some of them are a yeah, bit annoying, but. <laughs> I think because I, I don't, about, I'm hardly, no, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I love you guys because none of you ever tag me for giveaways. <laughs> <laughs> I think Especially that's, that's for accounts been, that I, I don't yeah. follow them. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't been tagged very much because I haven't been very active. So <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of been, I guess, a positive. Ah. <laughs> uh, Everyone wants a free bottle. Mm. Oh, Cuban yeah. Groove. So just you maybe maybe you joined us late. That um, that is one that I've tried, and there's one that I chose as the four tuberous perfumes that um, yeah. maybe Matey can can try. Yeah. Um, that so Nuit de Bacilit um, mm -hmm. is is just like oh, it when it. You know how I mentioned that it, the smell stayed in my car for mm -hmm. for a couple of weeks. The problem yeah. with it was it wouldn't have been so bad if it smelled like it did on my skin, but it, over over the two weeks, it started to smell like rotting food. <laughs> and so for for a while, well. when when <laughs> when when my kids were getting in the car. <laughs> they were convinced. They were convinced that someone had left a piece of food in the car, and and it was actually the perfume that I had worn. Makes me want it even more. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the hope is that you'll shower and it won't stay on you for two weeks. So. <laughs> I do. Yes. <laughs> um. Hey, Hannah. Um. Okay, yeah. try to buy a discount. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. it just makes sense. This, this, this or, hobby. Or, yeah, like secondhand. Like, yeah. A lot of us don't go through all our fragrances. Like, look at how many of us are selling off fragrances, you know, and they're perfectly yeah. fine, you know, just slightly used, you know, but the juice is fine. So there's no reason to buy things, yeah. you know, brand new if you don't have to. Well, I mean, uh, yeah. with in particular, I mean, I guess the other thing about I just buying, spilled my tea. Uh, <laughs> now you know what a now you know what tea fragrances smell like. <laughs> now I smell like chai, like it's not poor chai. I mean, at least uh, at least with um, buying from indie brands and artisanal brands, like you're not going to find those on discount websites and they're the people right. that you know the good thing about buying from them is that they get 
all the money from it. Um, right. And there's yeah, no yeah. middleman. But the bigger the bigger brands, um, I've I don't have any problem looking for discounted, you know, right. options or, or yeah. secondhand. I buy a lot of stuff yeah. from Facebook groups as well. Mm-hmm. Hey, well, Bryce. I, have, I haven't gotten into Facebook groups, so. Oh, you they just avoid them where <laughs> where possible. But if there are some, I good avoid ones Facebook in general. Yeah, <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> some of, some of I, those fragrances. I can't. I can't with the drama. I can't. Oh, yeah, it's, just, it's like so many dra- more important like, things in life. If you think there's drama on Instagram, there's it's amplified a hundred times on Facebook groups. Mm. It's a dick measuring contest on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, Facebook true. ruins it's families. True. It's so true. Yeah, I, I'm actually I'm about to block some people right now. <laughs> and God, and God forbid. Like you know, I used to be, I used to be on a couple of Facebook groups, and I used to be on uh, Oh My Soul. And man, don't don't even try and say anything negative about a perfume on that. Facebook group. Mm-mm. I mean, uh, mm. it's not that yeah. serious. Oh, my goodness, it's just perfume. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, somebody said something. What? Uh, I mean, it mm-hmm. eats her popcorn. Uh, Listen, yeah, I've done giveaways. I, I, I really just I really just wanted to, you know, give something to to somebody, but I can see that. I can definitely see that. You know? Uh you know, I I I actually in all seriousness, I don't mind being tagged if it's someone <laughs> that knows me, if it's if it's someone that right. knows me and thinks I might like this perfume. It doesn't happen very often, but I I get tagged by people who don't even follow me um, just because they need to put names down and they're probably all they're doing is starting to type something in a search field and my name pops up and they're just adding me as as the five people they need to tag and I'll just block them. Right. Yeah, yeah. Or I just now. Oh, lost you. Because I want them oh. oh no we're good oda jane um had a giveaway and i'm like look you guys and i tagged a bunch of people because yeah i think that's awesome i already have a bottle so i didn't want to be entered but yeah yeah what events is that uh, just that bro <laughs> who's saying fake nice things carter <laughs> oh carter nothing fake over here man Listen, I I have three, four, three, three. I don't. That doesn't normally happen. So I have uh, all like all three of them basically. Just the only one I'm missing is Spite EDT, <laughs> and I truly do love them. Like they're they're beautiful, and I just know how hard he worked on them. So that that just makes it even more, you know. I think the I think the beauty of following someone like like Carter and Chronotype on Instagram because mm-hmm. I think um, I was following him um, before Chronotype launched and not just him but mm-hmm. there's been a few there's been a few brands um, who like you've been able to see the start of you know the. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. The whole yeah. thing. It's and, just and raw. It's raw. Going through the launch. And yeah. Transparent. Yeah. And and you get to be part you get to be part of that. You get especially with with Chronotope, he's like shared a lot. Carter's shared a lot of stuff mm-hmm. that a lot of perfumers would not necessarily share. Right. Right. And it's just been really good. Yeah. And he continues to do that with the flight salon. Yeah. So he, yeah. he really which I think is amazing. I mean, it, they're never going to do it like him. So it's not like he's given away his secrets, you know, nobody's, he's the only Carter. He's <laughs> with his hand. So nobody's going to ever be able to like steal his, you know, <laughs> his, uh, what are they called? Are they called recipes? I don't want to call them that. The, formulas. You know, the wrong thing. Formulas. Mm. Yeah. Nobody's ever going to steal them. So. Mm. 
yeah. I think it's it just gives us like a unique perspective on it, you know, which I think yeah. is awesome, especially for uh, just, us, us who like to go more in depth. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And you just get a bit of, you just get more of an appreciation for it. Mm -hmm. um, so Joseph, um, yeah, I think you're referring to Facebook groups and the obsession <laughs> over performance. Um, man, like it's, it's like I said, it's like perfume turned into a sport, um, almost right. like the smell, it takes a back seat and it's all about how long it lasts, how much you can fill a room, uh, how many panties it can drop, how, how many, many compliments panties you can get. Drop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How it's going to change your whole entire personality. <laughs> You'll go from being an asshole to being Prince Charming. <laughs> Do you, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, cra it's just crazy. <laughs> it's just crazy. Um, but, you know, it, but having said that, a lot, a lot of, YouTube fragcom caters to that like so it's right. it's you know the 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 create content creators know that that's a market and right. they just feed, yeah. they're just feeding that right uh, yeah yeah compliments and... that's why I don't grow because I just no nah, well yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. you got. I think you. I think if you're going to do a YouTube uh, channel for fragrances, um, and there's a couple of us watching who, who do it, mm -hmm. you kind of have to decide. It's almost like you have to decide: right. Am I going to right. try and grow this channel, or or be as genuine yeah. as I can be? Um, I don't. I'm. I'm convinced you can't. Right. You can't really do. Both. I mean, I, I guess you can cut off, right? <laughs> I I think you're gonna have to compromise or like you know give something up, right? Like so, it, it, there's well, there's a there's a couple. Sorry. No, no, no. Um, go. Oh, oh no. There's a couple that I still like trust, but then I've it, what I notice is okay. They're, then they're scared to say negative things about perfumes because then they won't get sent things or they won't, you know, you know, they don't want to offend anybody kind of thing. So that's that's the issue is then their, uh, you know, their reviews get swayed and that that's where, that's that's where the issue lies. Is is you know, are you really being genuine about what you're saying? Or are you just saying it? because you got this bottle for free and you feel like you have to and if you don't then they're not going to send you anything anymore and other companies won't work with you anymore you know it's just it's kind of a vicious cycle you know yeah or or yeah or you could buy samples and just review them <laughs> yeah but the bottle is so pretty you know it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just it's the hype. yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, see, I, yeah. I don't think it's unique to Fragcom, though. I think it happens in all, you know, little communities of influencers, yeah. the, you know, be the beauty community, all of them. So I think it just happens. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's a yeah. that's a really interesting point um, that Anna makes. Bias will always exist as bias when you spend. It's true. And so I, I, I think, like, if I'm doing... And you speak up if if you think differently to this, might um, if I'm doing a review with a bottle that I own that I bought, you can almost take it for granted it's going to be a positive review because unless mm -hmm. I've decided to get rid of it because I don't like it, um, it's mm -hmm. a bottle that I have in my collection because I I like it, um, and so yes and. On the other hand, if I've if I've bought samples um, uh, and I'm doing a review from a sample, there is a chance that I might be doing a negative review because I didn't like the sample, so therefore I'm not going to be buying a bottle. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think right. I, I think someone asked me on Instagram about the, whether it's possible to do to actually do a proper review with 
with without a bottle um and i and my answer was obviously yes you can do reviews from mm -hmm. a sample um as long as you know that it's a genuine it's the genuine right. product um and yeah and it gives you an opportunity because you haven't committed to buying a bottle which means you don't necessarily like it and you can be more um well no you can still you can still be impartial with a bottle that you have bought it's just that it's more likely it's going to be a positive review if that makes any sense right. um uh, but you yeah because otherwise you wouldn't have it you know if you yeah that, that's right whereas if you have a sample um you know like I, bu I buy i buy discovery sets every now and then and like i've got a couple of discovery sets where i like some of the stuff um and if i if i decide that i'm going to review everything then there's there's going to be something there that i don't that i don't like it's it's very rare that i like everything i smell in a discovery set uh right. sometimes people Unless sometimes people send me some <laughs> <laughs> sometimes people send me samples um from their own perfumes and stuff and i'll and i might decide to review it there might be stuff i don't like and i've done i've done negative reviews um yeah but you know because i'm not relying on anyone sending me bottles um right. i don't feel i don't feel like restricted by doing negative reviews at all i will say one right. thing though whenever i do a negative review i get more thumbs down um on those videos so people hey, engagement is engagement so it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah yeah I, I no, just, but, it's just uh, something it's just something i noticed right, right, right i think um to you know to be fair and i think carter was very transparent on who he sent samples to and i was one of the people so i was able to sample um and i didn't like site edp so i just you know i but because of the way he approached me and I, i'm pretty sure everybody else because i think he approached everybody the same way i didn't feel any pressure it was if you don't like it that's fine do whatever you want with it it wasn't like i'm sending you this to review you know where i i have gotten approached by another indie you know perfumer like i'm going to send you these samples to review you know and i'm like well if you're going to send them to me to review then i'm going to be you know 100 percent honest he's like no 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 but if you don't like them then tell me don't say anything you know and i'm like that i don't really want to do that i'd rather just buy it and be able to say what i want and not have that pressure yeah. you know to and then i'm, I'm going to be worried about pissing you off like I'm, i yeah, don't I, I don't want to feel that way yeah i i did i did the same thing there was a couple there was a couple that contacted me is it is it suga t ts is it tsuga tsvga or something yeah that was they, yeah, that was the yeah, one. So yeah, that, that's so they said if you if you if you don't like it, just mm -hmm. give me the feedback. And I said, no, I don't I don't yeah. want them. Um and I think Yeah, Meleg, I, I told him I'd rather just buy it myself. Yeah. Yeah, and I think Meleg, Matt Meleg um approached me similarly as well. So offering free samples and um so I yeah, I I basically just let them know mm -hmm. that uh I don't want to yeah you know be be yeah. beholden to you know like Politely with, withheld. Declined. <laughs> yeah yeah um let's see i'm just checking to see if we've got any questions in the meantime um okay. yeah uh correct <laughs> Eve, that's uh, well I, I don't know we haven't we haven't talked about this um no are you well, talking about see, uh, I'm yeah what, what do you want to say uh well what i want to say is i want to see everybody win right so i was super i i was excited for if, if i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be specific but you know i i i get excited when that happens because i think that's awesome it's like a you know a big step in there you know it, it, this is obviously what they're pursuing as a career you know this is probably more of a full-time job for some of these people and you know they have to eat and i get that this is you know that's the, the name of the game so i i get it i get happy and i'm not i probably wouldn't purchase something because i it just doesn't appeal to me but you know it's i don't know i i i, I it's 
<clears throat> I have a hard time with, you know, saying negative things about that because I understand that they're doing this as a way of, you know, making an income. So, are they? Do, do you think? Um, I'm I'm more curious about the fact about whether they are making an income. I, I don't know. Uh, honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I yeah. would hope so. If not, then that yeah. would be an issue. <laughs> I would hope so. Um, I hope they're getting something from it. You are know? you specific? Like, I'm um, I'm think. See that question that that's up there. I the first thing I thought of was um, uh, apparent. So it seems that uh, Zahar George Zaharoff has partnered with a few. YouTubers mm-hmm. um, and done fragrance with them, but I have no idea about what. No, I don't think that's probably are they're not going to be transparent about that. I doubt that we'll no. ever find out. But I would hope, from you know the reviewers, you know standpoint, that they would get compensated in some way because obviously the company is going to stand to make a lot of money off of it. So you know. Yeah. Um, uh, have I ever? Um, I I haven't. I have never thought about doing my own fragrance. I have. I have toyed with the idea of just like experimenting at home, but never with, um, never with any sort of plan to release my own fragrance with my name and stuff like that. Um, but I would. I have. I have more uh, plans to. I do want to. I do want to get involved with perfume, the perfume industry, um, but not as a brand or a name or bringing my own or becoming a perfumer myself. So, um, but you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I might change my mind, but no. And no one's ever mm-hmm. really like approached me to to do anything. Anyway, they should. They should. <laughs> Zaharoff should have approached you. <laughs> I haven't smelled. I haven't smelled any of his stuff, and he I seems, haven't either. Look, I, I've only he seen him like on a, a nice couple guy. of YouTube videos. He seems like a really nice, nice mm-hmm. guy. Yeah, um, he said it's when they partner with shady brands, and I agree with that. Like, if they were partnering yeah. with somebody shady, then that would be, yeah, that would probably like, be like, do you mean like, like Dua or Alexandria or something like that? I don't know. I, I I'm. I don't have any. Who do you mean, Eve? Name, name yeah, names. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, there was another question uh, about IFRA. IFRA. Yeah. What's what, so? What's Where'd happening with IFRA? Is it just? Uh, well, I think because of the uh, some perfumers are very anti IFRA and or IFRA, however you say it, and yeah. um, my. my I mean, I'm not a perfumer, so it's, and I, I don't think I really have anything from a brand that's not compliant. Um, I, I would kind of be worried, you know, especially if they're. How do you know if they're being responsible with it, you know? Um, yeah. And there are so many perfumers that are compliant that make masterpieces, like that just are gorgeous fragrances. So there, to me, there's really no excuse you know other than you just don't feel like it and which is not a good excuse that's my two cents <laughs> not yeah, that it matters no, I, no, I agree i agree like i i've recently um been able to get a bit of insight um just talking to a couple of uh, to one or two indie perfumers about all the stuff that they have to all the hoops they have to jump through um and obviously if i don't know if carter is still on here um he he would know He's himself. Compliant. um yeah. Yeah. yeah but there there is a lot of behind the scenes stuff you have mm-hmm. to do to make sure right. you can even put your perfume on the market um right and it's seen and i have heard like you know just through conversations that there are a few perfumers um, that don't necessarily do that. I don't know how they, they're able to get away with it or maybe they can only sell them in a very limited um, market. But, yeah. Um, yeah, Raphael, that that seems that seems okay to me. I, I, know, I know there have been some brands who have emailed me um, and 
basically, uh, you know, said, we'd like to send you some samples and then whatever you like, um, we'll send you a bottle for review. But that's still, I still feel, I, I usually, uh, you know, I still said no to them because I didn't know the brand and it is still like you're kind of obliga obligated in a way. Once you say yes to even trying the samples, mm -hmm. then I feel, I would feel obligated to follow through and then do a review. And to be, to be perfectly honest from my personal point of view, I actually don't want a new bottle of anything unless um, it's something that I've wanted for a while. So, but if there are people there that just like to collect the bottles and maybe they sell them after they've received them, that that's definitely one way to do it. Um, oh, you're frozen, matey. Okay. We've lost her. Mm. Can anyone else can anyone else see Maite on screen? Am I back? Uh, I can hear you. Mm. Am I back? Oh, hello. I back? Yeah, I can see you. Can you see me still? Ah, uh, no. Uh. Ah, she's buffering. Okay. Well, m maybe okay. that's the maybe that's the universe's way of telling us that it's time to wrap up the live stream. <laughs> All right. I'll give her I'll give her thirty seconds to come back. Otherwise, we'll say no. We'll say goodbye. I'm sorry. Sorry, Alex. Oh. Well, while uh, while we hopefully wait for Mike to, to come back, thanks everybody for coming on. Like we've had up to close to 40 people on at the moment and loving all the comments particularly um people have made some very good contribution to the conversation thanks eve oh sorry maite i'll message you after this um but thank you so much for coming on uh or stop telling the truth yeah um thanks amina uh love you all and uh i'll see you on my next video i i guess um and uh have a great wednesday night thursday wherever you are see ya <laughs>